Sweet. So now that we have a little bit of a plan, um, we can start coding. And um, yeah, I, I also kind of want to show you something else. Um, and this is something I was like, you could do on your own as you're kind of going through. I know, like, I saw like, Shrai was using like Lucid Chart. You can now start using Trello as a way to start like creating little documentations about how to do something like React router setup. You could turn this, you could kind of make these little small tutorial cards. And you could actually then like, you know, maybe use both Figma or like Lucidchart and Trello because you could like link a, in your Trello card, you could link like the drawing to your Lucidchart or like an image so you could like combine stuff. So it's a way <clears throat> you could start um, creating this like documentation and then you can start, you know, linking these cards within your other cards. So I could take like this React router setup link, copy it, and where's my where's my Trello board? Um, did I lose it? Okay. Let's just go back here and find it. You know, maybe we had to do React router in here. I could throw like that link in there. So you can really just start getting this <clears throat> really connected source stuff. So leave that up to you. Um, Cause I, I think you get a lot when you like go through and you create this, like these links and you kind of start, it's like the writing your own cheat sheet. I think that's just such a good way to learn. Um, So let's go ahead, let's go and start building out our models. <clears throat> and I think for this, I just might slack, I'm gonna slack out the commands so we can kind of go maybe a little, oh, this project's not current. I'm gonna also, wait, in, I guess, why well, I'm not sure. I'm in Neo, I'm gonna make, to, I don't know why it's not showing up today yet, but I'm gonna make this current. Just let me show you what I'm talking about. In Neo, we're going <clears> to <throat> loosely be like kind of following along with this. So there's our Lucid chart. So here, here's the models we're going to create. And we're just going to get all of this set up right now. So I'll slack this up so we can kind of just bust through it. OK. I can just go ahead. <clears throat> um, so in my, no, maybe let's do this here. Now, now that we're working with branches, it's just, it's just, you know, important to kind of like keep, keep it in mind. It's like, okay, I'm making the models. I'm doing this in my JY models branch, which is fine. <clears throat> that's, that's why I kind of created this branch. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to create these models. So we're creating our agent model. Should we also have created a separate branch from our master? You know, I would say you don't have for like if just following along right now, you don't have to. Um, just just stick on master or main, and <clears throat> that'll make it more simple. I'm just going to be doing branches just for demo, just so you can start to see it. Right. If you want to, you can, but it might make it more complicated to try to follow along. So I, I, I would recommend not to do it, but you can. All right, <clears throat> so now I create a buyer model. It says first name, last name, email. The important part here, you know, it has that agent 
belongs to. So our buyer belongs to an agent. And then I'm going to do a, and I'm just copying these from Slack. So we're doing our property, which has these fields. And then once again, it belongs to an agent. So our agent's going to have many properties and our agent's going to have many buyers. And then we have this last one of our address. Realty model address. So an address has a street, city, zip, and an address belongs to a property. Now it's going to be a little different in this case because a property is only going to have one address. So it's actually it's going to be a we're gonna, uh, it's going to be a little different. So let's let's look at this. So let's go to our agent model first. So agent RB. So an agent is going to have many um, buyers and an agent is going to have many properties. Let's go to our, our buyer model. So command P buyer.rb. So this was filled out for us, the belongs to agent. But something to note about our buyer, just I talked about this briefly when we talked about the schema, but um, let's run the buyer. Notice we have this cities field that's a text, but I want this to be treated as in an array in my code. So what I'm gonna do for that, and you did this with your homework, with your MySpace and we did it with the cat Tinder. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to serialize that text into an array. So serialize cities array. So now I can treat, like this is gonna do all that stuff for me behind the scenes. So now my buyer.cities, that's gonna be in a, like I can treat, it's going to be in an array but it's, it handles that, that kind of hidden step of storing it as actual text in the database. Cool. And then I'm gonna to go to my property model. Now this, my property doesn't have many addresses. It has one and the plural is uh, the singular, Pluralization here is important. I don't want to pluralize it. It has one address. I don't say addresses. Cool. And then I can do a rels db migrate because i just created four models so it's going to create those four tables you know we have our agents table our buyers our properties and our addresses tables And now I'm going to also slack, I'm going to do the seats file and then I'm going to slack it out. <clears throat> yeah, we can go ahead and have some users. All right. I'm going to make some changes first and then um, slack this out. First of all, we're going to want to try to do this with a lot of data, but for now, I'm going to like make this smaller. So let's let's look at what we're doing here. So let's just kind of go line by line and maybe comment this out like the hard coded array of strings. You know, which will be our cities. So we have some hard coded cities. Okay. Then the next thing we do is 10 times, you know, create 
a, no, I'm just call this faker agent. Where we're using faker to go just create an agent, but you know, we can create this real looking data. Like it's gonna have like something that looks like an email, something that looks like a phone number. So we go create 10 agents. And then inside of here, this is nested. So this is gonna be for, no, for each agent. For each agent, you know, create five buyers. So we're, we're within this 10 times loop. So I'm creating one agent. And then for that agent, I'm going to go create five buyers. Notice how I'm using that a.id. <clears throat> and here we'll like you know pick a random number to cities dot length minus one. <clears throat> and then we're like sampling however many we picked. So the the sample method in Ruby is like pretty cool. Let's just kind of show what it's doing. So I could have like an array, like one, two, let's just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's my array. I'll just call this X. So I could do X dot sample. That gives me a random number back, but I could do x dot sample like three. That gives me three random things back. <clears throat> That's pretty cool. So what we're doing is we're for the cities, we're going to sample. We're going to go use our hard coded array and just sample a random number from zero up to the length of the array. Cool. And then once again, then we hit another loop. I'm going to do this five times. So for each agent, create five properties. So sold. Um, I feel like this is not this is a little confusing or this might break let's do a i'm going to switch this to sold is going to be random up to two so let's let's kind of look what do you think this is saying Go run it in Ruby. Let's do like random of three. That gives us, you know, one, two, one, zero, zero, one. So this really gives us like, I don't know, sold will be true. Um, Two third, am I getting this right? Two thirds of the time. It will be false. Two thirds of the time. Because I'm picking a number zero through two. And so, yeah, there's a 30% chance that will be odd or 33% chance. So that's a way to have like, I can kind of skew this fake data. So this. So property is more likely to not be sold. It's still random, but, and then I can come up with a random price from, you know, you know, 199,000, that's funny. Let's do current house prices, 300,000 to, you know, 150,000 to, or that's a million.
I don't think we have a percent change. Oh, yeah, this is more just like getting like a random, a random percentage. So our just kind of randomizing that our sold price is going to be like, you know, minus 3% to 3% more of the price it went on market for. So we're just creating this fake data using some Ruby code just to make it maybe, even though it's all fake, um, it's going to kind of look realistic. You know, we can pick some random beds between one and eight, random baths, you know, one and eight, square footage, 1,000 to 7,000 square feet. We'll just pick a random number. And then for our address, once again, we're still, we are still within the context of like one agent. Or actually this is five times do this is actually within the properties for um, for each property. You know, create an address. So let me just see if this works before I slack it out. Dot exit. So I'm going to do a rels db seed. Okay, and then I could like step into my rels console. And yeah, let me, I'll actually just slack this out right now. And I could do like a rels. Um, I could do like my agent, the all, I'm kind of expecting to have 10 of those. There's my 10 agents. I could do my like property. And then like, maybe I, let's, let's just see if our associations are cor correct. I could do like my agent dot first dot properties. I'm kind of expecting each agent to have five properties. And then, you know, the first property should have one address. So I grab my first agent, I grab all their properties, I grab the first property and I grab the address. There it is. You know, likewise, I could go backwards. I could go like address dot first dot property dot agent. Okay, my agent dot first should also have buyers. Undefined method buyers. Oh, I did address dot first. My address does not have a buyer. It is my agent dot first dot buyers so there's my buyers so you know joshua wants to live in slc or draper and that's like their max price of house and you can say this this data looks realistic like that looks like a realistic looking email that kind of looks like a real phone number and so forth cool So in my mind, like, I think this feature or this, this thing is done. This, uh, you know, model, this initial model creation and seeding. So, and I can kind of use this generic, like, hey, what do I want to do with this? Um, so we've done the work, we've created the branch, we've done the work. Now we're complete, we can pull from master and main. So, okay, let's do that. Get poll origin name, just in case of someone else or master, that's what it's called in this case. <clears throat> so 
So I pull from master, nothing's been changed. I don't really need to test again because no changes have been made. If some changes have been, like if I pulled down changes and I needed to do, if things were changed, um, and like, especially if I had like merge conflicts that I resolved, I'd probably want to go test again to make sure I didn't break anything. Um, so that would be this, you know, step test, make sure it's working. Now I can push to my branch and create a pull request. So I can go ahead and do a git push origin JY models. Or wait, did I, I don't think I add, I don't think I committed. Okay, I need to like do a git add, git commit. Can't just push, I mean, or git add dot git commit dash M. Models done. Push um, origin JY models. <clears throat> cool. Now I can push up that. And yeah, now I'm ready to make like a pull request. So you know, I could take this Trello card. Oh, where's my GitHub repo? Now I need to go to GitHub. Well, there's a couple different ways I could find it since I'm being organized. I could go to my projects and go there. Cool. There's my repo. Now I can do a pull request because in my mind, like this is done. You know, and then I could leave a note about what I did. These are generally like, once you get to a place, these are gonna be like pretty detailed. Like this might be like a half a page of notes or something. And like I could throw my link, you know, with associated with the, here, here's the card or here's the task that this was associated with. Um, it's gonna like show all my commit history for this particular branch. I could create the pull request. And then, yeah, like someone's gonna come through, they could look at all the changes. Cause now there's actually some, quite a bit of changes made. I'm thinking like, oh, they, <clears throat> they added all these files. Okay, there's all my migration. This is all the stuff that's like been added. I think like, cool, that, that looks good. So now I can go, where is it? Let me think. And then this would be someone else. Someone else would like review it, you know, and then merge it. <clears throat> so now on GitHub, that branch has been merged to master. And now I can see in my master branch, like that commit of like models done. Like if I go into my app, it's gonna have it's gonna have those changes. I can see that was done like two minutes ago. Not want to make this change. Cool. So now I do a git. So now I'm on like in in Trello board land. I would say okay. This one has been to QA. QA is kind of the step where like this person's, I should have done this before, but like this is where like I would create the pull request. I would move this to QA. And then someone would look at it. They would test it, look at the code. And you could think about this being done when it's merged to master. Once they approve that pull request, then that would go to like the done column. And we're gonna go through this flow like a whole bunch. So this might be a little confusing right now, but this is really gonna give you a nice little like guideline of, of the flow. <clears throat> cool. So I would go do on this, I would do a get checkout master. Cool. So now I'm on my master branch. Oh man, all of these are like red. 
crossed out. Why are, and I'm gonna close this terminal too. Why are all those like red? I go into my app, I go into my models. Oh my God, they're all gone. What do I need to do to get those changes? Get the poll? Poll. Oh. Yeah. I could do a poll. Get poll origin master. There's also one way I could do it. I could say a get merge JY models. I can like merge the code from like my branch onto another branch, but that would take the branch on my computer called JY models and merge it onto my master branch on my computer. But yeah, I could also, I think the better way to do it is just do a git pull origin master. Cause then I would get in like some, maybe there's a chance like other merge requests were made and then I would get those changes as well. <clears throat> and now I have those changes and now Life is good. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Cool. So I want to do... I'm going to not do this. Uh, I guess I don't even have it. Where is it? The controller stuff. We're not. I'm not going to have us set up the controllers right now. What I'm going to have us do actually right now is let's let's do one of these backend features. I think we can like um, start working on this. So now I have like this available backend feature. We can like throw this to on deck. Now, something I should probably throw on this particular card is, I mean, we have this story for like this feature. And this maybe, you know, if I was being a little more organized, like I would have thrown this on all the cards, but Like, this is what we want to do. Um, I could almost even, you know, if I go to like, let's see here. Where is it? It's going to be here, links. Sorry, this is... Um, this app is like live and it's whole, it's being run on Heroku and Heroku will like throttle your website if you don't pay for it. But I just kind of want to show this. So I could throw like the, the requirements on here. I could like throw the UX or like the wireframe on here. Like, and if we would have done this during like this is stuff you might do during like planning. And let me kind of show you why this is nice. <clears throat> because, you know, this could be like two days later, um, I'm moving on to this next um, like pr process. I'm like doing the next thing like, okay, I'm gonna like, you know, my boss wants me to work on this available backend feature. And so what I can do is I can like, before I move it, I'm just gonna like check it out. Like, what do I need to do? I'm, I want to make sure, you know, something I'm gonna do, like, I just wanna like make sure, oh, I deleted that. I wanna make sure like the requirements are clear. And since this is nicely documented, it's like, okay, I need to find all for sale homes as Alice, I want an available page, should show listings. Yada, yada. Like, so I'm getting like the information in my head. So I need to group, I need to show all the listings by real estate agents and should display the price, number of beds, bathrooms, square footage, street, city, and zip. I'm like, okay, that's, that makes sense. And then I even have this wireframe so I can like visualize what I need to do. 
like cool. I could also like, since this is a backend feature, you know, I also can go like visualize my database and like, okay, what do my tables look like? And so I have all this information about like, okay, here's what we're trying to create. Here's what my database looks like. Um, this is what I need to be doing. And then also we're gonna be figuring out these steps right now. We're gonna be running through these steps. So we're kind of doing this first step of like, I want to figure out how to send back the data. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is, and I'll just leave this note right here. So I'm gonna just decide kind of right here. I wanna send back the data like this as an object that's gonna have like the property like, I'm just kind of thinking like what the UI would need to do this. So we'll give them back the property ID. Um, we'll give them back the price, the beds, um, the baths, square footage, um, the city, the zip. And I'm also for like, I'm gonna get back to like the agent, you know, first name, the last name. Um, you know, the agent ID, call it agent underscore ID and the email. So it's gonna be an array of data that looks like this. Cool. <clears throat> and then I could also be like, okay, I'm gonna do this as a get request to, I'm gonna just call this, you know, this makes sense if you go to API properties. this will give you back an array of this data. Cool. Now this is actually, <clears throat> Nice, if I can kind of like, I haven't done any of the work, but I'm, I'm like before, like I'm coming up with this plan, like, hey, if if you do a get request, like, I'm because I'm, I'm going to be building the back end, this is my task. So I'm just saying right now, hey, if you do a get request to API slash properties, I'm going to give you back this information. I'm going to give back an array of objects that have the property ID, the price, the beds, the, um, first name, last name, agent, and email. Now there's going to be duplicate information like because an agent has many properties. So like there's going to be duplicate like agents in here. So I'm kind of doing this by property. So we'll, I'm kind of just going to like show this and then we'll look at it, but it's this first step's really nice because what I can do actually is I'm going to leave a note on the front end. Okay, this is back end guy. If you know I am working on this, but the API will look like this. at this I don't know if this is gonna work if I can do like markdown inside of here. Cool. 
so the back so now like the back end the person who's working on the back end could like either you could slack this to them or you could communicate with the front end or you put this on the card on the front end card it's like hey i'm working on the back end section of this i'm not done but this is what it's going to look like if you do a get request to api properties you're going to get back this data And the nice thing is as the front end person, I could be like, okay, well now I don't even like, I don't even need the back end working. I can get like this 99% of the way done without the back end. We'll probably, and we'll look at that. We probably won't get to it today. We won't for sure, but it's, it's nice. Cause now like, once again, this is so much a communication tool about, you know, working with one another. So like the back end, you know, kind of has decided how to send the data. And now that we've decided it, I could like send that to hey, like the front end. Here's what the API is going to look like. Cool. But now we actually need to go get this working. So we're going to figure out how to actually do this SQL call. Right? Because we can't do like a property dot all and get all the address information or like an agent dot all. So we're gonna do this with SQL. So I'm gonna open up um, SQL Electron. So now this is where I do, I want to connect to my database that is um, for this particular project. Um, and what did I call it? And this is gonna be the name of your project is whatever you named it in your database YAML. So I called this DPL, I'm looking for this database, DPL Real Estate Spring 22 Development. So DPL uh, where is it? Did I not, I might need to like quit. Maybe I didn't quit SQL Electron. Should be in there. If I had SQL Electron running and I created the database, maybe it didn't pick it up. So I'm gonna make sure I quit SQL Electron and then reconnect to my server. And there it is. There's my DPL real estate spring 22 development. So I'm gonna connect to that. Perfect. So now I could do like a select R from agents. And there's my 10 agents from my, my seats file. Let's do, let's also just, I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Because I also want to like, I'm going to want to get information from these two tables properties. Sold price, cool. So there's my properties. And there's my agents or I also need my addresses stuff, right? address so there's actually three tables in here that i need to get data from addresses all right because but i i don't want three different database calls i want this to come back like this an array of objects that have the idea of the property to price beds bath city zip first name so like the price that comes from the properties table the city that comes from the address table the first name comes from the agent table okay so i'm going to comment these out but let's let's try to start doing this so let's start with the select let's just grab like the like the um, properties ID 
ID and let's get like the price. You're going to see why I have properties, not ID, and just price. Let's just do this from properties. I'm going to do this kind of slowly. Okay. So I have my properties. I just have an ID and a price. Okay. Let's... Um, do some more. So now I actually want to do a inner join because I want to get, let's say I want to grab like some um, agent information, right? Because this is property information. Now a property belongs to an agent. So let's join on that agent. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. And actually, let's just show it. I could say, you know, agent underscore ID. Syntax there, where, oh, I don't have this inner join filled out yet. Just grab, just to show you. So on my properties table, I do have that agent ID information. But let's actually grab it from the agent table. So I'm gonna do an inner join um, agents. And let's alias this as a, okay. So I want to join where my agent.id equal equals my properties agent underscore ID. Where's it? Uh, as a, oh, I have a double equal. Properties, there's join, inner join, agents, inner join. Oh, do I, I need an on, inner join agents on, I'm forgetting my on. A, why is that not working? Inner join. Does this one not have join? Okay. Has A on a dot id equals properties. Oh wait, I'm gonna, I am getting reversed, confused there. Okay, I thought one of Okay, I need that. I had that from the wrong spot. So this is still just grabbing my properties id, the price, and agent id from properties, but we're joining on agents. But now since I do this join, now I can grab the a um, dot ID. And if I try to run this, I'm gonna get it like, I have two IDs now, so I need to alias this as like, I'm just gonna alias this as a underscore ID. Notice these are these are the same. My agent underscore ID is the same as the agent ID because that's how I'm joining them. So I don't really need this a dot ID because I'm grabbing it here. But we could grab something like the a dot first name. And now we're getting back. We're getting back all of this unique property information. Now the agent's going to be in there multiple times because the agent has multiple properties. But this is like the price of property ID one. <clears throat> I could also grab, now I can grab the, the last name. Just 
do that as a dot last name. Cool. And then like a dot email. So I'm slowly building what I want. But now I also need like, um, well, I can also do like, what do I need? I need beds, baths, square footage. Getting close. So I'm grabbing all of that information. So I need um, the city and zip. That's on my address. So I need to do like another inner join, inner join addresses. As I'll call this like AD. So my, and I can copy this. So my address has an ID that's gonna match the um, property. So, so on my, sorry, on my address table, I have a property underscore ID column because a address belongs to a property. So match where the address ID equals the um, address property underscore ID. Actually, no, this is property. Property ID. This gets like so. This is why like when I do this, I like to like just do the basic selects from all of these so you can see you know, what your tables look like. My address table has the property ID, property underscore ID. So that's how I'm gonna relate it back to my properties. Cool. So now I'm joining those. So now I should be able to grab um, like the city and zip. Oh, I'm missing my property, um, properties.id. And there we go. So there's my good old lovely um, SQL statement. So I'm, there is duplicate information, but I am like each row is going to give me like all of that information for like a given, it's really giving me all the information for a property. It's giving me like, okay, here's the properties agents data there's bed square footage and then also the property like address information. So here's this command. So now that I've got this working in SQL Electron, the next thing I'm going to do is set up my routes controller in rails. Okay, so let's do that rails g controller. So I don't have this controller, so I need to create it. API slash properties. All right, now I'm gonna define a route for this. So I can go to my routes, namespace, uh, API to end. I'm going to do a get request. I said this was going to be to properties. That's going to go to my properties controller to the, we can just say like the index method. Cool. <clears throat> so just created my controller. Ah, crap. <laughs> What did I forget to do? I forgot the branch. 
but we'll just keep going. We'll kind of skip the branch on this one. But let's go to my properties controller. I'm going to do my def index. And just for now, just to test that I have my route set up and my controller set up properly, I'll just do like a basic like test of render JSON property. Uh -oh. Not what I want to do, but this will at least test to see that I have this path set up so I can like test that. Could start up my server and just do like a quick, you know, local host 3001 API slash properties. So that's giving my property information. It's it's not that that SQL version that I want. So, but I know my routes set up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, I don't want all, I want to get the available properties. Oh, wait, there was one last thing that I forgot to do now that I say the name. There's one last check I want to do. I want to do like a where on here. I want to do, why is it not letting me type in here? I like, this is like frozen. Okay, I want to do where um, my properties dot sold there's this little symbol this is like not true and then i could get like the sold in here just to see it see the if i don't have this in here it would grab me all of the properties for this call i want to grab all the ones where you know, it's not sold. So that was one thing I forgot. Cool. So I'm gonna take this code, I'm, and let me slack this out too, so you can have this little code snippet. And, and we're gonna do this a lot more time. So I, I kind of know like this is a little, um, hurried, but we'll go through this tomorrow. And then with each page, each feature we're, we're doing, we're going to like repeat these steps. So we're going to spend like two, three days going through these steps. So you get some good practice with like SQL and joins and that stuff. So I'm doing a property dot available. Now this doesn't exist on the property class on that model. So I'm going to create this method. Uh, available. So now that method's defined, I like to like take my SQL and paste it like just right there. So I have it as a reference. Like I know, like I've tested this in SQL Electron, I know it's working. So now the next part is to get this working in Rails. And Rails has some helper methods that are going to make this nice. So there's a select method. And I can just take what's in my um select right here you can just copy and paste that as a string okay and then on here i need i'm going to do the dot notation so i'm like chaining this i don't need to do the from because i'm in the properties model so it's going to know to like do it from properties so now i can do my a dot joins method and I'm going to copy all of my joins text and throw that in here. Okay, now I can do a dot where. And then I can copy this. I don't want to copy the semicolon, but throw that in here. And then, yeah, that's going to like. 
the syntax error. So now let's refresh. There we go. Getting back that array of data that has the ID, price, bed, sold, city, zip, bass, et cetera. So if I go look at like my Trello card, <clears throat> we, we did the, we figured out the SQL call and the electron and we did the routes, controllers and rails. We connected that SQL call to rails and now we tested. So I can say through rails uh, controller. You know, in R in the custom. Or I'll say this in a class model method. And there we go. Cool. So now this is done. So yeah, like I should have had this been on a branch and then I could have like pulled from master. Um, created push to the branch, created a pull request, have someone review and then merge it. But I'm just for time's sake, let's just get push origin master. Oh, I didn't commit, I didn't add. You still need to like, still can't skip these steps of adding and committing. And there we go. <clears throat> so that, that should be up there now. Then I could come to my Trello board. And yeah, you know, this available backend that should be been in the progress. We tested it and now it's done. And now, you know, tomorrow when we start working, we can start working on this available front end feature. <clears throat> so, yeah, when looking at this app, you know, we spent, when we thought about how long this was going to take to do, like you look at it and it doesn't seem like it's going to take that long. You know, we spent a lot of time <clears throat> kind of planning this out, but this is pro this is going to help us in the long run because if you, I just can't say this enough, if you can't explain how you're going to do something, you're not going to be able to code it. There's like, there's just no way. You have to at least at a high level be able to, you know, kind of have a game plan. And this is like a pretty basic game plan, honestly. But yeah, so that took us like an hour and a half. And then, you know, we set everything up. And, you know, we have like half of the feature done. And that was like, you know, four hours later. So how long do you think the rest of this is going to take? It takes, it's going to take a couple of days. Because now there, there's this whole other part of like, this is how our data is coming back. Now we got to make this data neatly fit into this UI, which is not going to be easy. So. Let's hop off. Let's take lunch. Um, yeah, this, this code should all be up on, mas on master. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like I said, I, I know this is a lot, but the, the good thing about, the nice thing about this lecture is we're gonna go through all these features and we're going to kind of do the same thing for each feature. So it's gonna be like, 
uh, four times doing this over and over again. So it's, it's very, it does, there's a lot, but it's repetitive. So go ahead, let's come back. Let's call it 2.15 and yeah, you have a good lunch, everyone. I'll All right, sounds any good. Any questions from anyone? Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Have a good lunch.